Welcome to Electro Online. In order to understand how the phase shifting circuit is adjusted by changing the frequency of the circuit, I built up a table here that we can take a look at. Again, the simple phase shifting circuit with a capacitor over here and a resistor here, such that the output voltage is the same as the voltage across the resistor. And in a circuit like this, the voltage across the resistor will be ahead in phase of the voltage across the capacitor. And we can also see that the voltage across the uh, resistor will be, there will be a phase difference between that and the voltage across the entire circuit, which of course is equal to the input voltage. Now, what I have here boxed in red here, this is the example that we did last time. We had a frequency of 200 hertz. This is an angular frequency of 200 hertz, which gives us a capacitive reactance of minus J25, 25 ohms in the negative 90 degree direction. That gave us an impedance of 55.9 with a phase shift of minus 26.57. And then if we then calculated the output voltage, we got an output voltage of 35.8 with a phase angle of 26.57 relative to the input voltage, which was 40 volts at a zero degree phase. So that means that when we had a frequency of 200 hertz, like we did in the last example, we had a slight drop in the voltage output, about 10% drop or so, and we had a phase shift of about 26 and a half degrees. Now what happens is when we make the frequency smaller, instead of 200 hertz, we drop it down to 100 hertz. A smaller frequency means we're going to have a larger capacitive reactance, which means we're going to have a larger impedance and a greater phase difference in the impedance. Now you can see that the value of the reactance across the capacitor will now be equal to the resistance across the resistor. When those two are equal to one another, when the resistance is the same as the capacitor reactance, then the angle between them will be 45 degrees. We'll get an impedance angle of 45 degrees, which will then result in a phase shift of 45 degrees, but with a much larger drop in the output voltage. It's only about 70% of the original voltage. If we now make the frequency even smaller, we go down to 50 hertz. Notice now again, we double the capacitor reactance to 100 ohms. That gives us again a larger impedance, which means a smaller output voltage, but a much greater phase shift. Now we have a phase shift of 63.4 degrees. So we can see as we make the, the um, frequency smaller, we have a larger capacitor reactance, a larger impedance, a greater phase shift on the impedance, and therefore a greater phase shift on the output voltage but at a cost as the, as the magnitude of the voltage keeps on getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then on the other side, if we make the frequency larger, a larger frequency means that the capacitor reactance will then become smaller, which gives us a smaller impedance, a smaller phase difference on the impedance, and therefore a smaller phase shift and a much smaller loss on the voltage. So here you have a good idea or a good feel at least for how the output voltage changes both in amplitude and in the phase shift as we change the frequency of the circuit and leave everything else alone. The capacitor and the resistor will be the exact same voltage, I mean the exact same value and therefore you can see how the change in the frequency then affects the circuit and that's how it's done.